Welcome to the Cataraqui Woods Dental Implant Institute, a nonprofit organization dedicated to furthering both education and research in the field of oral implantology. My name is Dr. Waji Khan. I also run the Top Gun Dental Implant Study Club. You can learn more about Top Gun at www.topgundisc.com. Joining is free. So today we have a case presentation which is all about smile design using Photoshop. So this is a bit of a fun case to do and it's going to basically illustrate one uh, little tool that you can use uh, using Photoshop or any sort of uh, like photo editing software. Uh, there's some brand name ones out there like Smile Design Pro and stuff. However, uh, for the benefit of those who are listening on this case presentation internationally, you just want to use something which is readily available and possibly already uh, on your desktop or on your laptop computer. So today we have a case which is basically a patient as a 39 year old healthy female who presents with a fractured crown on her upper left central incisor. She's also seeking more crown length on the upper right central incisor. So in this photograph you can see where the presentation is. Uh, not necessarily the greatest of photographs, however uh, when we take a look at the radiograph you can see that there is an obvious problem uh, with that upper left central incisor in the form of uh, in the form of caries and so the basic option for this patient she had options of bridges and uh, partial dentures, implants, all that stuff. She wanted to go with something that was going to be an implant. So the treatment plan for this lady is consent, extraction of the root tip, immediate implant placement. Uh, in this case, there was adequate buccal bone plate, so we were able to go with that immediate implant placement. Uh, bone grafting, the gap jump junction, and then some sort of platelet-rich fibrin application. Uh, four months of healing time, at which point in time... <coughs> We wanted to proceed with the crown for the patient. And then lastly, uh, like, I do, like, like I like to do with uh, most of my implant cases or any, uh, any sort of prosthetic case, uh, is give the patient a bite plate. So upon retraction of the tissue, you can sort of see this uh, sort of occlusal shot uh, for the patient. And here's another sort of like modified occlusal shot. And here's the occlusal shot I, I want to show here. You can see the uh, buccal lingual uh, tissue dimensions on that tooth. And upon taking the tooth off, uh, you can see the crown popped off on the upper right central incisor as well. Uh, and so we basically proceed with... Uh, looking at this occlusal shot here, proceed with removal of that root atraumatically. One can see that beautiful, uh, nice, thick uh, buccolingual tissue in this patient's case. And using a set series of pilot burrs, we proceed with placement of uh, the implant for the patient. Now, we had excellent primary stability in this case. One can appreciate the fairly large buccolingual gap jump junction in this case. And in order to preserve this, uh, we are going to graft in this case uh, using, uh, after putting the cover screw on, uh, using a 250 to 1,000 micrometer, micro, micrometer uh, uh, mineralized cortical cancellous allograft uh, from uh, Orograft. After doing that, we place a platelet-rich fibrin membrane on top, and one can see it very nicely in this photograph right here. And this is all secured down uh, using a figure 8 3 silk uh, uh, suture. So here's the post-op radiograph for the patient. You can see that we placed this implant about just, just, just slightly more than 3 millimeters from the proposed uh, margin and the main purpose of this is so that you can achieve a nice emergence profile for the patient and not a tooth that looks like a ridge lap or something along those lines. So here's the patient with the flipper in. One can appreciate the short length of the upper right central incisor which we're going to address uh, later on. So here's the flipper in place for the patient as, again. Post-op checklist is basically make sure that the transitional prosthesis has been placed, that the post-op instructions have been provided in terms of care of both the surgical site and oral hygiene and rinses, uh, that post-op medications have been provided in the form of analgesics and antibiotics, and that the post-op follow-up appointment is scheduled and the patient is fit for discharge uh, with the responsible adult escort. So here's the patient at the seven-day follow-up. You can see that there is some plaque buildup around those sutures. Uh, didn't cause any issue. There is still nice maintenance of soft tissue volume in the from the buccolingual perspective. Uh, those sutures are removed, and this is what the tissue looks like. And here's the patient four months later. So you can see that there has been a bit of a dip in the soft tissue from the buccolingual perspective. Uh, at this point in time, we basically proceed. So here's the radiograph to show you what things look like at the four-month mark. And here is another shot of the exact same thing. Uh, so we basically proceed with a soft tissue crown lengthening. After sounding the bone, we determined there was an adequate amount of ferrule uh, such that we could basically reprep the upper right central incisor for the patient for a new temporary crown and uh, achieve this just by f forming a, a soft tissue removal. 
Uh, you can appreciate also at the same time we did a stage two procedure for the patient using a roll flap. You can see on the top right there a 6-0 uh, proline sutures, which be, has been used as a mattress suture to basically hold that roll flap connective tissue inside for the patient. Uh, I didn't remove any other soft tissue in this case because I wanted to sort of keep as much soft tissue as we had available uh, for this patient. So here's a, just an occlusal shot showing how that roll flap basically uh, augments that buccal lingual tissue a bit with the temporary in place. Now with the flipper back in place one can appreciate uh, the amount of incisal length that we were able to increase for this patient simply by doing a soft tissue gingivectomy uh, crown lengthening procedure for this patient. So here's the patient uh, after a few weeks of things healing up and basically here's the patient from the, after removal of the suture for the roll flap you can see that we were able to augment that soft tissue a bit and here's the patient uh, just with the uh, just with the incisal edges so it's time to basically take an impression here so we take the temporary crown off clean up our margins basically proceed with putting some retraction cord down using a uh, a transfer coping as well and taking a radiograph to ensure that that's seated one can see also from the radiograph uh, that we are not impinging upon the biological width with respect to the uh, the uh, the upper right central incisor so we go ahead and take both impressions at the same time fixture level impression open tray and a impression of the crown and i always like to basically uh, Pour, not pour out my own impressions, but at least put, place the analogs on them so that there's no getting, you know, getting problems at the lab where things are spinning around and stuff like that. Here's another photograph of our impression tray. In this t case, in terms of impression material, uh, we used uh, we used the 3M impression material called Imprint. So we like also taking shades for our lab. Uh, the labs usually, you know, the more information you give them, pictures, X-rays, uh, you know. Uh, uh, data like the shade guide uh, along with the, you know good models and stuff is going to allow you to get much better lab work back so we usually like getting the stump shade and also the end shade uh, for the lab and here's basically a pour up of the of the lab model without the prosthetics here's a photograph of the actual prosthetics so both the crown and the ucla crown uh, so one's an emax crown the other one's a ucla uh, uh, screw retained abutment uh, for the central incisor so we're getting excited here because this is this is the fun day and when we try this on the model we can see there's a slight problem in the sense that uh, perhaps i didn't communicate to the lab uh, properly that the soft tissue around the implant the height the gingival height i wanted it to match the other central incisor and that the implant had been placed you know south enough uh, in the bone or for, you know apically enough in the bone that there's going to be sufficient room to push down on this tissue uh, to get a proper emergence profile so when we go to this is the photoshop trick that i'm going to show you here so basically at this shot here what i could have done is taken photoshop and using the lasso tool you basically just go around your central incisor so going back to the lectures about principles of aesthetic dentist dentistry and the one thing that we refer to as dominance of the central incisors uh, if you just take that lasso tool and basically via photoshop you make a copy via a cut or this little 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 little, um, little button on the top you can basically invert that or mirror that and basically move that over and what it shows you is what any sort of like buccaling sorry not buccaling or mesial distal uh, deficit there's going to be so in this case here if i was just not do anything with the one one and just do a two one crown we would have ended up with a very wide two one crown in order to basically fill up that space without having a diastema you can also appreciate from the apical aspect if there's going to be any soft tissue uh, void uh, in this case there isn't we're going to post another case later on that's going to demonstrate that there is going to be a soft tissue void in which case it's going to advise you that you're going to you're going to be required to do some sort of either hard or soft tissue connective tissue augmentation in order to make sure that you're not having teeth that are of a different shape uh, patients don't generally like hearing about this after the fact so if you can use a tool like this using photoshop just to demonstrate to the patient and in this case we had you know taken the central incisor off anyway where the patient wanted a longer one so it ended up working out <clears throat> but if it was going to be the case that you were presenting the patient with a uh, large uh, central incisor and then after the fact saying well the only way to address this is to basically give you a new crown on the other side as well assuming that this had an, this conversation didn't take place with respect to finances and stuff this patient may not necessarily be happy so we cement the crown so this is the crown cemented on the one one for the patient <clears throat> and using the photoshop technique this is what the crown on the two one should exactly look like and unfortunately when we actually go ahead and cement the crown or insert the ucla crown you'll see that there is a gingival margin 
uh, defect here. Uh, the, the gingiva are not matching up in terms of height. You can also see some blanching of the tissue because this crown is pushing down on the tissue and this blanching does go away after about five to 10 minutes. So the patient was happy, but needless to say, I was not happy. And so here's an occlusal shot, basically just showing the beautiful preservation, not quite ideal buccolingual soft tissue, but definitely a, an improvement uh, from what we had four months post-op. So we send the, the crown back to the lab. We basically ask them, can you please uh, match up the, uh, the, the gingival margin so that they match. And here's the patient after wearing the first crown. You can see the beautiful soft tissue bed that's been created uh, by the first crown. And here's the second crown in place. And you can see that this is a beautiful result. And this patient was very, very, very happy. So post-op checklist, basically ensure that the patient has a bite plate, ensure that there's some sort of provision for long-term follow-up in cases like this. And on behalf of the entire dental treatment team at the Cataraqui Woods Dental Implant Institute and the folks at the Top Gun Dental Implant Study Club, I want to thank you for listening to our presentation.